the curve starter motors is made in offering in the mid size suv segment a space that's growing fastest in the industry on top of that tata motors has taken a bold bet and launched the ev variant of the car first which will be followed by an ice later to talk to us more about the strategy and about the car itself we have shailesh chandra the md of tata motors uh, passenger vehicles business uh, mr chandra welcome to ntv profit thank you my pleasure so uh, why is it there an ev first and not ice let's address that first yeah see uh, first let me let me talk about the curve you know because you mentioned about we entering a very congested segment uh, and actually that exactly was the thought process when we were conceptualizing what kind of product we should launch in the mid suv segment if we have to really enter this and rational you have given that it is the fastest growing segment so it made sense for us to launch a product and that the reason was simple that globally we were seeing that uh, suv coupe as a body style was growing in popularity especially in the premium suv segment and typically you see that a premium suv trend typically gets into the mainstream also so we said that why don't we pick this body style and uh, come with a clutter breaking concept in the market and that is how the curve got conceived and uh, that has been the background of curve and uh, your question was uh, therefore on why ev first why ev first yeah. so i would say that is more symbolic okay it is symbolic because actually we were conceiving curve as an ev okay. to start with as a pure on a pure ev platform when we saw the design evolving and coming to the shape in which you see today we said that why we should keep divide the eyes segment of this kind of a beautiful design and styling right so actually there are same similar kind of top hats coming on two different platforms yeah. one is a pure ev platform and the ice has an atlas platform mm -hmm. so we have actually taken uh, an approach where we can use mm -hmm. the same concept on both the ice platform as well as the ev platform okay so clearly the customer so that's the reason okay. why we first since it was conceived as mm -hmm. electric we said symbolically we should launch that first okay it's only a space of one month it's not a, a long duration between the launch of the two so customers will immediately in i think the next couple of months at least will have both the options uh who is the customer actually do you think given the range of the car at about 400 to 425 kilometers the fast charging that you're talking about do you think the customer will now look at this car first the ev first when they're considering buying a mitsubishi suv so see uh, we have seen that uh, some of the barriers that existed in the electric vehicle was of course one was the price parity mm -hmm. with ice uh, acquisition price parity uh, the other one was range anxiety and the third one was the charging time mm -hmm. so you you would have seen in the launch that we talked about all these three barriers and how those three barriers have been broken those are the three reasons why a somebody who's preferring an ice is not buying an ev because of those three reasons this car has no price parity with an automatic petrol mm -hmm. right as when you go to the on road price this does 400 km plus 400 to 425 km real range mm -hmm. right and therefore uh, we have seen that 85% of the drives intercity drives in india is less than 400 km so therefore you would not even worry for a charging station in between your intercity drive that gives the complete freedom because for cities ev was a no brainer yeah. right but uh, when it came to full freedom of also going to intercity drives and all uh, now this has given that freedom so it comes at a price parity it comes at a range which uh, takes away the range anxiety charging time also comes down with the new cell uh, chemistry and the charge rate that we are using that also comes down so i would believe that now actively an ice automatic buyer in this segment would definitely consider ev okay and uh, therefore chance for conversion okay So essentially, you're saying that uh, this can be the only car in the garage and the first car in the garage. It is true because see, uh, uh, we have been studying for the last five years the trend. Uh, recently, we did a survey of about ten thousand customers, and we found that now those customers who have let go their ice vehicle first, people used to buy EV and also keep their ice vehicle. Thirty-six yeah. percent of the customer, which is more than one third, have actually let go their ice. which shows the growing confidence uh, on the ev side and uh, 75% of the customers are using that as a primary vehicle yeah. so when i see these two trends 
and when I see some of the additional barriers which have been taken care of, people, you know, with this kind of a car and some of the cars of high range that we are bringing, can absolutely be live with only EV as their only car in the family. Okay. Uh, does the curve at 17.49 lakh rupees come with the risk of cannibalization within the Tata family itself? Uh, the punch, uh, as we, the punch top end is about 16 lakh uh, extra room, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, the, uh, the next one itself is around the same ballpark. So, will there be a risk of cannibalization? Will that force you to reduce the prices of uh, the punch as well as the next one, EVs? I mean, that will also help in the, reducing the entry barrier for the EV adoption. See, uh, you know, when you see those overlaps, you're comparing an entry price of curve versus the top end price of uh, some of the other ones. Some people go for features, some people go for just the range, right? So there will be different kind of customers. Uh, there is a difference in the price point of all these. Next on, I would say, with the offers that are there in the market, it is at a still a price difference of say one and a half, two lakh or so. So therefore, there is clear price difference between that and punch if you see the logical car which gets sold is around 35, 13 and a half to 14 lakh. So each of these products have their own space. There is a gravitation towards a certain size and a body style in the mind of the customer. A customer is very clear that I want this body style or I want this size of the car depending on you know his own use, use case. So therefore, I see that there will be always a bit of cannibalization but not to the extent that it should worry. Us. We spoke about the Nexon and the Punch, uh, both great successful models. You think, number one in the segments, so do you think the curve will do a repeat of the Nexon and Punch for you in the mid-size SUV space? Uh, that's the intention with which we have brought the product. Okay. But I know that uh, even Punch and uh, Nexon have grown mm. in their volumes, unlike many Me Too products which uh, do well and then stabilize or go down. Nexon, if you see the history of Nexon growth in terms of its volume and even punch since the time of its launch, these kind of products when you bring something new in the segment grow over a period of time as more and more people start becoming familiar to that product. So I think this product has the power of continuously growing and we'll have to see what will be the initial traction that we'll see. Uh, but uh, I'm very confident that this will be liked if we have to go with the trends that we are seeing globally. Uh, let's talk a bit about the charging infrastructure. Uh, you have collaborated with a lot of other charging players. Talk to us, is there still bottlenecks? Are there still challenges remaining which you need to address for that mass adoption that you're going for? I mean, you're incentivizing practically the EV space. See, one thing is that you give a range in the car that uh, completely makes people forget that there is a need for a charging station in between, which I think this car yeah. does. But there are cars which uh, do need, right? For example, a Punch or a Nexon might still need, you know, a charger in between. So I do believe that on highways, the penetration of charging infra has to really go drastically up. And that's why we have gone for open collaboration and we are trying to work with various CPOs that if they are investing in charging infra, they should install the charger where it is really needed by the customer because we have the telematics data. 4 billion kilometers of data to tell where the charger will be most useful. Which would also mean that for the charging infra player, it would also be a point of uh, the best utilization, right? So therefore we are working with them. We are also representing ourselves to the government of how we can de-bottleneck okay. uh, the installation of charging. And I believe that in FAME 3, the government will also, uh, hopefully, they will also focus a lot on charging infra growth. Uh, and therefore, it's only a matter of a few years that we should be in a position that charging infra should start giving confidence to the customers that, yes, when I move on these highways, I see the charges around me.